Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cootie, your Archer, and today is day one of Acrylic April. I'm sure many of you are here going, I really hope she wasn't playing a practical joke, but I'm not. We're on April 1st, and the joke's on us because we're going to paint every single day for 30 days. <laughs> on the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. He is going to be uh, taking this journey with all of us, whether he feels like it or not, <laughs> but he's also going to track us with cameras and you know try to make sure questions get answered we've got moderators there they're the little butterflies with wrenches they're going to make sure you guys have the links and information you know that you need to know so if you don't know where something is they're aware where all that is and they're going to make sure that you are covered i'm kind of pumped you guys pumped i'm excited all right we got to just jump right on in you guys ready okay, to jump right. in boom day one let's get into it <laughs> okay so we have already Put in our under our acrylic ground. We've done our little gridding, so we have our shapes kind of worked out, and we're ready just to paint. I put out my palette over here. I have decided not to put out the green in our palette just because I felt like I was going to get to it with the yellows. We have the vermilion. We have the cad red medium. We have the Naples yellow. We have conacridone magenta, burnt sienna, Mars black, titanium white, phthalo blue, and ultramarine blue. Let me miss my paints. It's a little bit of a dry day. Mm -hmm. And we're not using like any retarders or anything on this, this particular time, because we're just going to paint. Now, full candor, usually I do these alone. I've mentioned it before. So this will be the first time that I do this as an instructor. That's going to be an interesting journey for me as well. So I guess we're all on our personal kind of growth journeys. I am going to be using just a few brushes, just these colors, you know, just pretty much every day. I'm ready to get into it. I have put out my references. You guys have access to these references as well. Um, this is the photo image. This is a black and white. I've got my grid out here. And then off to the side, I've put my value studies. So I have that in an, another color chart. So I have that to reference. So I've got all my stuff, even my color wheel, ready to go. And my brush is put to the side. I think I'm going to start with my number eight Cambridge. I'm going to go ahead. It's a bright brush. You know, you can use whatever acrylic brushes that you have. This isn't about having like the materials or the exact colors or any of that. This is about painting every day. That's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to start sort of blocking things in and getting a sense of value and form. And I think I'm going to start sort of right up here. I felt like I wanted to take my ultramarine and my phthalo blue and kind of give them a mix. I'm going to get just a smidge of my white into it just to tint it up a bit. Aren't you guys glad you watched all those videos on color? <laughs> just to tint it up a bit. And I'm going to come here and just very confidently begin to paint in my background. Now my thing is I am not, I'm going to add a little more tint to that, a little more white into the group i am not going to be blending as much as you might think i'm not going to get fussy i'm going to just put my paint down and try to create a sense of value and sense see i'm loading up my brush i'm working this corner and you can see i'm going to come to right about here I'm not saying you can't blend if you feel like blending. I'm just suggesting that this style of painting is just about thinking about where your value is and where your form is and getting it roughly put down. Ooh, new stuff for me. How are you guys doing? You nervous too? Mm-hmm. Okay, so rule painting one. Can't judge the journey by a first step. We're just going to get her done. I'm adding a little bit more white as I go and I may come back with a lighter value. I just want to make sure as I'm traveling through, I've got this on. You can see how it's kind of cute that the pink pops through. Now I'm going to add a little more white to this as I go. Now, what, babe? Let, let me ask some sort of re reflective questions here. All right. Ask any of them. So you've given everybody the color wheel and yes. this chart thing. Yes. And with chart. those two tools, you could figure out other substitutions? Yeah. Once you have those tools, once you've done the color chart, then you know what you have right now in your paint box that's close to a color that you're trying to mix. So you mm. don't necessarily have to run out and get a particular tube of paint to get there. 
Gotcha. It's a good gift to give yourself. It's a little bit like some of the, I'm adding more white and I'm coming down here. I'm going to be lightening values as I come through the middle space. I just want to make sure I've got some basis of blue that will be peeking out on and, my clouds. And for those who are just, just joining us. Yes, what is happening here, I'm sure. The pink. I've added more white. I'm going to come right here. You've done a pink value study. Yes. And that's what the weird pink background is. Yeah, I guess that's deep magenta in my color. Deep magenta. So you, rather than doing a value study with just say black and white, you've done it with magenta and white. Well, I, I kind of sketched it in and yeah, I just use the one color so that that's, what's going to pop through any places that the paint isn't solid. Ah. And that's really going to help me. I'm going to get just into sort of my phthalo and I'm going to really tint it up as I'm coming through because it gets much lighter as it comes through here. And we want to make sure that we are lighter as we kind of come through here. Trying to get a sense of that. Now, as I'm going, I can even get a little bit into my maples there. And it's going to give me that sort of mid-range transitional green that's happening up in our sky before we get down into the oranges. Isn't that nice when light mixes color? So I'm putting that right there. Get a little bit more of our Naples. You notice I'm not rinsing my brush a lot? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not having to do that. It's just very, very chill. Now Put we started right off, here. Hmm. We started off here with you had already done your homework. Yes. So the th homework's there and available and also free. And we're going to have some homework at the end of this for everyone to be ready for tomorrow's class. Yeah, we will put the homework up. So what I will do is I will do the value study and video and I will do the uh, gridding video and those will be on the web page and the playlist for Acrylic April. Everything really, your resources, your traceables, your printouts, your worksheets, all of which are free, will be on the web page links. I'm sure the moderators are dropping those to you guys right now. And that will get you to anything that you need. And it's just all there for you whenever you want it. Even after Acrylic April is over, if you find this video at some other time and think, no, lady, I just wanted to paint a sunset. No. I'll paint every day. I'm going to kind of work down into some oranges here that I've got going. I'm going to experiment maybe a little bit with my vermilion and my Naples. I is, agree with Stephanie. She <laughs> says free is a great price. Free is my favorite price for things. So you can see I'm just letting it blend here. Th this, uh, I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm recapping for everybody. Coming who, through this range here. These, the homework is going to be available on the website. You yep. can find information in the links below because it's complicated for us to try to relay all that. It is. It's, it's, it's more than you'd want to just sort of blurt out in uh, a video lesson. There's a lot of extra there because I, you know, we talk about the origin story. I don't know your origin story. So I'm not going to assume that you know anything. And so my goal as a teacher is to try to make sure that if you needed to know something, I'm going to get some of my yellow here, my cadmium yellow. If you needed to know something, it would be there for you. Now you're picking up more cad yellow as you go there, intensifying yeah. that a bit. I am a bit. I'm going to be coming through here. I'm just trying to put down color. I'm just trying to think about what I'm seeing because this is going to be very loose. This is expressive. Some of you guys, when you saw the um, paintings, you were like, oh, no, I'm feeling super uncomfortable with that because, well, reasonably, it seemed a little bit much. I'm going to go ahead and get my magenta into this a bit. Get that sort of purple going, full blue background. Can I say I'm super shocked that this purple turned into that beautiful orange or this pur this pinky purple turned into that beautiful orange? Really? I, it's and it's I, fun and it's going to get brighter in a second. I just got to get my little mountain line in. See, I'm just kind of coming along here. Now, the, the, color, the color wheel video makes me understand why, but yes. I just am still a little shocked that we went from pink magenta to, ooh, that's pretty orange. Isn't that wonderful? It really is. And we just play with these little color schemes. We just enjoy that. We, you know, let our underpainting come in and also influence our color scheme, which is nice. I'm trying to keep my brush stroke here level. This is my personal struggle. Because water lines really need to be level. 
You notice I'm not switching to a smaller brush. Not my, not my little thing here. Water lines being level was one of those, those really important things for your viewer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, they might find themselves tilting their heads right off the, right off the edge of your surface. I'm making a sort of muted further back little mountain. He's going to go right here. Now, sometimes you use like a straight Peeking edge out. or tape of some kind to do yes. that, don't you? I kind of did that earlier in the sketch, and I'm hoping I did all right because, you know, as we go, that'll make a difference. I'm going to start blocking in some of what I've got going on here. The color here is like a real trip because, you know, we've got this really nice orange, right, that we're going to be working. But it's in some of our blue, isn't it? Mm. And so I'm going to come across with this sort of like orange green. It's a very unusual orange green. Got too much water in my brush here. And it's going to come across and the pink is popping through. And then it turns purple and orange. Just a like, little bit into the blue. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a whole bunch happening here. So right now I'm going to have something just just a little brown. I'm The sky always reflects in the water. And so what I'm trying to do is capture that sense of value and reflection in this middle range. So we know since we've got three primaries in here that it's going to kind of gray out, neutralize out. That's what primaries do. They create a nice muted color and get stronger in my color as I come forward in my blue. Can you guys see I'm doing that? Yeah. So we're just coming forward right here. I'm not trying to blend too much. What I'm really sort of, I, I really love is how those colors uh, more, are yeah. sort of evolving on the surface there as that they, they mute out and form the reflections and the it it's very natural looking. It should be when we're all done. We're going to see how it goes. <laughs> I'm coming down here and I'm adding a little more of this blue. I have to say, I've really enjoyed watching you mix color since I've been watching these color vi mixing videos. Have you? I got to tell you, I'm like really like tripping out on this because this is new. So I'm just running this color. <laughs> John is, what John is doing is he's keeping me not nervous. I've been married Am for I? a while, so I know my husband's moves here. Actually, no, I'm just. To be very honest, since I've watched the, that color video, I understand so much more of what you're talking about that it's it, it's understanding the bottom part of the color wheel made all the difference for me. It just like was really freeing, isn't it? It was like, oh, got it. The purples are the key. Just anecdotally speaking. Get that little value coming through there. Now I've got my little blaze of sunlight thinking that it's going to come down here for a second. So, you know, just the to keep you... The grids are starting to pull back. I'm going to come back up into my sky and let this have a little dry rest. This is really nice. Is it? Yeah. I hope so. I am very like, what? We're doing it. I'm going to... And we have this big art high five to our wonderful, loving community who's joined us today. I love my community. I'm making a bright orange community. <laughs> A bright orange community. And what's going to be really fun is I'm going to come here above these mountains and it's going to make the color in them really sing. I'm going to come right over the top of it because they feel a little purple, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to just come along the top. It's going to travel all along them. And that's going to really brighten up a lot of what we have in that color here. I'll bring some of that orange couple of places through here. Oh, I like that. Waz asks a great co Hi, question. Hi, Waz. Now, I'm going to say this question is... I'm going to get back from my painting at the back of my brush. Working my long handles, guys. Waz would like to know, can we add gold to our painting? You can add any colors that you want to I, painting. I think gold is like glitter. You just can't have enough. Just, just you know, you just got to love what you've got and enjoy what you're doing and... Don't be too, like, freaked or stressed about it. I'm going to go ahead and maybe, yeah, I think I'm going to darken my ultramarine with a little of my vermilion. And I'm going to come back here and talk about the back. Maybe even a little of the burnt sienna. I'm trying to make this sort of gray, distant, sunny cloud that we've got here. 
Today, what's happening is my brush is grabbing too much water. So I'm having to wipe it off a little extra. It's a little extra. I'm going to try to capture this cloud shape. It's going to be coming up here. And I know it's darkest back here. So that's something that I want to really be talking about. Now you can change if your cloud shapes. Some of these cloud shapes, I was like, I mean, I get what the cloud was thinking, but um, I'm glad one of us does. <laughs> but I didn't really love it. <laughs> I'm always wondering, what is that cloud thinking? You are actually. He's not even kidding. He uh, has many musings about clouds. I do. I'm coming along. See, I'm being very loose and just tapping my brush out. And I'm just really trying to not freak out about anything right now. Personal goals. I am going again, burnt sienna into the brown, and I'm going to come back here. And the tops of these are now going to be the darker part, right, of our cloud. Maybe a little bit comes up here. We're just pulling some value, aren't we? Now you're leaving those brush strokes really showing, aren't you? Yes. Yes, we are loose. This. This is my grail, guys. This is what is, you know, tightening up in your art. Adding a little darker value back here. That's just something you can always do. You can always come in and give yourself a slightly, and add a little cloud color right here. Back up into here. You can always find a way. Tighten up, but it's really hard. I'm going to come tap some little, little fluffies right there. Oh, little orange got in that. That's nice. That is. I was going to say that looks really cool. <laughs> I'm going to wipe off my brush, but not get any water in it. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my navels into this mix. And I'm going to actually use this as lightening my clouds a bit. See how I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Wherever it's light on my reference i definitely definitely want it to be light on my cloud but i don't want to leave the the color of the cloud quite yet behind so see it's going gray another way to get to the gray value that i am hoping to see i'm going to paint through here and then i think i'm going to put some sky color back I'm using two jars of water to make sure that my colors stay fairly clean. Yeah, I think, you know, coming even around here, I may change the value. These are really close in value. So I may take my ultramarine and my phthalo blue and my white and go up a value or two for that part of the sky. Just a value or two. So that it's got a little more transitional space between them. You see how we're doing that? Yeah. Just a little bit. We still have the two colors and they're still well mixed. I'm just going to work these out here. Go ahead and pop some little bits. See how you can put little pops of the blue sky in? Yeah. You can always come back with that. All right, getting some nice work going here. And I like to get back on stuff like this if I can. I can see it. Now I'm officially knee deep in the ugly stage. I, I, I think it's starting to look cool. I like how it evolves from here. <laughs> it's my favorite. Welcome to the ugly stage. So if you have any questions about substitutions, what you have, knowing that substitutions are relative to your other colors, is very important. And that's why doing that color chart helps you know if you say don't have vermilion and you want to substitute it with something else, you can say, well, I have these colors. Yeah, I have naphthal red, I have naphthal red light, I have cad red, cad red light, any of those. And then you can go in there and figure out how those are going to mix with your colors and know where to substitute. Anywhere you need to substitute. I'm going to just come across here. You can see I'm just 
putting these little touches of orange, but they're grayed out a bit by the background. I'm thinking about it. Just come here and add this on this side as well. I'm gonna wipe off and I'm going to get some of my brighter orange. See this bright, bright orange? Yes. I'm gonna definitely come through and put that out here. So Susie has brought up a very legitimate point. Hi, Susie. She's, she's like, look, Don, there are, what does she say here? 835 people in the room and we don't have bubbles and music. What's going on? Susie, thank you. I need bubbles. I'm feeling so stressed. Where's my bubble? I, I'm taking this. I, I got to <laughs> teach this class. I'm taking this and I'm adding orange. I'm warming up this corridor. I don't know if you guys noticed in the reference that the corridor was quite warm. And when I'm referring what? to corridors, I'm going to bring yeah. this back through. What does that mean? Is there's a light row that comes across water. And I always call it the corridor of light because it creates almost like this road to the sun. So now I am going to dry really quick so my under colors aren't just coming up into my top colors. Okay. Oop, not that button. Boop, there it goes. So I will say, yes, absolutely. I need to get the music back in here. What I will say is that uh, completely with apology, we have been, uh, this tech has been hecked to get built. <gasps> so it's, you know, we're, I'm learning so much, but bubbles are here. They just don't work remotely. So, but I'll give you the bubbles will be here during April, I'm sure. You get the stunt hands eight away. Just grabbing machine. the ultramarine blue, and I'm increasing the depth. That I have in my painting. Just increasing the depth. Sherpa was wanting to make sure that we we were prompt today. So knowing that we're at the 22 minute and 22 second mark, I well, think I we're doing quite cooking. well. All right. How are you feeling over there, Sherpa? You're assessing. I'm assessing. I know you're assessing face. My assessing face is effaced right now. I'm going to get a lighter value here. I've taken some of my Naples, and I'm going to grab some of my orange. And I really want to just come in here and find this light that I'm seeing. I know it's going to come under a cloud there. And I just really, what I want to really talk about is that light right there. I'm going to brush some of it up. I'm just trying to think about this spot right here, lighting that, that right up a bit. There we go. Take some of that light. A little more bright orange. That There's a, quite a bright orange that comes down. As they as as we used to say, you keep psyching me out, man. And I say, I'm just trying to lighten this up here. You're quick with the brush. I'm trying to be quick. We're gonna bring it down. Keep thinking about what's the value here. Fastest brush of the West. I'm gonna add some just straight yellow into it. I really like how that that. It, that corridor as you, comes. Get some yellow into this. Put some yellow right here. Like that right there. That's making me happy right there. That just pop of yellow right there makes me pretty really darn is. happy. Now, I personally like to carry that down. I'm going to actually kind of club something here and Sort of tell the story, like makes the sky look like it's pouring into the ocean. I like that. It's strange how once you added just those handful of strokes, it went from being this sort of 
orange background to this tra- beautifully lit transitioned sky. Isn't that crazy? It's. I'm going to add a little yellow to my blue, my phthalo blue, and I'm going to pop some white into it. It's just a small amount. I'm going to bring these little waves I'm seeing here. Bring up this little edge. I like these quite a lot. This is a very hard easel for this type of it's a very surface. small can er, surface relative to the size of the easel you have. Yeah, I'm just bringing these little waves up, talking about these little forward waves. Some of them are coming across here. Okay. So I'm going to keep adding a little kind of white into that. And interestingly enough, just a smidge of the magenta. Trying to find my space right here. Just a little bit, putting some right here. I'm just trying to give myself little kisses of the color. I'm going to take my, I love my yellow and my orange. It's just a real fun piece of yellow and orange. Get a little coral going. So coral is when we mix a warm orange, a red orange, and then we add white to it. I'm going to just Bring this around some places. So there's this gray color underneath, but I'm popping it up with this fun coral. Can you guys see the fun coral? Mm-hmm. Even come here through the through the waves again, even though that's problematic and kind of a pain. <laughs> Do that, showing that space. Now you've left your mountains very purpley. Yes, I have. I've left my mountains purpley. But if you wanted to make them bluer, you could continue to lighten them as... Oh, yes. Please do. Take your painting where you want it to be. Don't feel like... If you're like, this doesn't feel like what I want to do, don't feel like you can't change it up as you need to. Because you can. Just going to bring this peach around. And you can see I'm pulling now a lot of these sky colors out here, aren't we? We haven't even changed brushes yet, which to me is a lot of fun. You've just been brushing away. Just trying to put, woohoo, I had paint on my finger. Did you? <laughs> yes. I didn't even, man, you're so quick So if that. you have paint on your finger and you touch your canvas, the paint on your finger and your canvas will like dry together. It's like a whole thing. Breathe in, breathe out, deal with the nerves. Oh my gosh, I'm having such nerves. I don't think I've had nerves like this since like when I first, first was like getting maybe like even on, you know, uh, YouTube. Uh, that's partially because you really want to make sure that you get things right for folks today, huh? Yeah, I, I, I am. Like whatever pressure you're feeling, know that I feel pressure too. And you, and I know that's not pressure you guys are putting on me. I took my magenta and my ultramarine. And I'm going to play with this purple because I think it'll look neat up in the sky. You're wondering why I'm doing that? <laughs> why are you doing that? Well, because purple and orange are um, almost complements. They're like in that split complement range. And playing them against each other, especially coming into the yellow, will be very dramatic. Ooh. And we like drama, right? On, on the canvas? canvas, we do. On canvas, little drama. I'm going to just try to get this sort of in there. So that is the magenta in the ultramarine. Maybe come up here. See, the thing about clouds, right? The thing about clouds, see, is that they're random little messy shapes. And whereas we don't judge nature for its random little messy shapes, we even compliment nature. 
we're very judgmental of ourselves, of our own sense of random little fluffy shapes. So as you're painting this, remember that, you know, it is not unusual. I'm going to use this to kind of get my grade purple. See if not it's going to get me there. to be loved by anyone. <laughs> See, I said, nah, I don't like that. It's close, I just don't like it. So what was not unusual? I think you stopped mid-thought. I am. I'm thinking, babe. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a thinking. Well, this is... I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to mix my magenta and my cad red together. All right. And I'm going to get just a little bit of my ultramarine. There we go. To sort of knock those back a bit. You see how we're knocking those back a bit? This is the magenta and the vermilion. Sorry. So used to having a different color palette. I'm just knocking it back a bit. And then I'm going to come here and take this sort of darker color in. Talk Whoa. about these little. Those are hard. Off here in the distance. The little distant darker clouds that are here. That is the magenta, the vermilion, leaf hops of orange to be coming out here. That added a really unexpected, cool, like, cloudiness to it. It can. I'm going to get a little more of my ultramarine into that mix. You know, give it a little. See how the purple of it is, like, graying it out a bit? Yeah. But you still see the warmth of the sky? That's what we're doing. And I'm, look, I just wiggle this and I, I'm on the corner of my brush. You know, I'm on this number eight bright, but I'm on the corner of it. Now, you're not necessarily trying to be perfect photo accurate to the cloud oh, structures. Oh, please don't be. I you're, mean, you can be, but what you're trying to do is be like, can I get the sense of what I'm looking at? It's informing you. Yes. It definitely informs me. But it's not, it's not, definitely, it should be loosely followed because... You're working with color probably more here, am I right? Than, yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're more playing with the various colors against each other and using this as just a structure to work against, yeah? Uh, for me, yes. I'm adding this warmth under here because we got a little sunset above it. So in my experience, like warming up the bottom of the clouds above a sunset is never like a terrible idea. <laughs> and I'm just warming underneath here. There we go. I was having a humorous moment there, reflecting on it. I, I enjoy how much time you spend mixing, thinking about the colors that you're about to put on the canvas or surface versus the time that's actually applying them. You spend yeah, I know. John prepping. teases me about this a lot when he's got to edit, which is that I have a lot more time where I'm mixing color instead of uh painting color which which makes sense you got a, there's a lot thinking about what's going into the to what you're there, putting up there is a shocking amount of thinking going on i'm going to go ahead and mix a little of this sort of yellow orange mixture mm -hmm. then i'm warming this up and even a little i'm going to tint it with some white there we go and i'm going to start talking about some of the edges of what's happening with these clouds. See if I can capture some of that. This fellow ought to have some light. I feel like there's a bit of light right there above this guy. A little light peeking out here. Just right there. I'm going to get some more white and yellow on here. Come up above that little cloud and talk a bit there. Underneath here is wonderful with a little highlight. Ooh. Little highlight. I'm going to come and get a little more white and a little more yellow. Coming underneath this little cloud shape. I'm going to wipe off my brush a little bit and get some wispy bits up here. Do these guys have some wispies? Yeah, I think those are pretty cool. I like the wispies too, so let's wisp it up. Get yeah. into my white a little bit and pull some of these wispies. But notice I haven't 
rinsed my brush. Pulling some wispies in. I just wanted to, we were just coming up on the 35 minute mark. Excellent. Well, we're like literally almost at our mandatory cutoff of deal with it where it is. Mm. <laughs> oh, my least favorite part of daily painting. The deal with it where it is space. Oh, oh. young Jedi. Now that's, that's an, I, you know, I, we'll talk about this. I'm adding a little lightness right here. Sam and I are going to talk about some of these fun things a little later, but we're going to focus on the lesson here. Yes. So I'm going to pull a little just pure yellow. And I'm going to just Ooh. bring it right down here. That's awesome. You, now that's all done just by having the brush stroke one direction. Yeah. Just, 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 and I'll, I'll, I will make it a little like, you know, cause like sometimes these little things will. A little bit of water will splashy, splashy. Well, the surface is wiggling. So what is happening is that your, you know, your eye might feel some particular kind of way. <laughs> I feel really committed to my purple mountain. It's very majestic. I'm just feeling it is what I'm going to say, guys. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Be sure if you're using the Cambridge that you're wiping the extra moisture out often. Yes, I did just put some of that up in my clouds yeah. for some particular reason. <laughs> One of the things I love about watching Cinnamon paint is that uh, she just grabs paint and just drags it anywhere, especially color. She just, that, you know, it's like, oh, we need a little more color here, a little more well, color there. Well, we do, man. We need some more colors a couple places. So I'm going to wrap this up real fast. Got a little orange here. Hello, Brazil. And all of the other lovely countries who have said hello that I have not had time to say Awesome art high fives, too. I'm popping this very bright, saturated orange all through here. Have fun. Oh, it's so cool. I'm going to go ahead and get a little more of my saturated orange. Let's uh, make sure we pop a little few bits here and there from our sky into our water. Grab a little more. See, isn't that nice? That bright, bright orange. Doesn't go everywhere. There's a couple spots. I'm going to come and talk about that little bit of water. Get some more of that light orange. Now. Do some weird things to finish up. I will post this, then the next value study, then the next grid in. Ooh. <gasps> I'm going to pull out a little bit of my Naples yellow. This is the green yellow. So when you're out there, remember the band-aid color is different than what we're looking for. Go ahead and add just a smidge of my... Add to that. There we go. How light it is. Get even lighter. Get some wine into it. Tint it up. Just through here a little bit. See how we're doing? Mm hmm So you're looking your for that lighter value that's through here. Where's your where's your hard cut off today? Uh, forty five minutes. Okay, just curious. Uh, how am I doing? You're thirty nine. Uh, can I? I don't know. It's all gonna pull together in five minutes. We'll see. <laughs> well, I um, well, I'm I'm not going to try to distract you too much, but there's a lot of emotional support happening out here. So oh. many outpouring. Of Dude, I saying, need it. And you know what? Come by. We'll give you that emotional support back because we're gonna be we're all gonna be like in a different place by uh number thirty. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to switch to a brush that's a little bit drier. Same size, number eight. Just don't want so much water on it. I'm going to come in with some of my pure yellow right Jennifer. there. Jennifer was saying she's played such an impact in her, her, her painting. She's painted with you for months now. Oh, 
Oh. I think 17 paintings is what she said. So. Oh, you're ready for this. Kind of. <laughs> it's emotionally still journey. <laughs> Even for you. So I'm trying to put that pop of bright color right there. That's going to let me do a couple of things. I'm going to wipe off my brush, but not rinse it. I'm going to get right into my white. Right? Man, and this is just loaded on here. Okay? Right onto my white. See that gloppy little bit? I'm going to just let some of this right there. A little bit of that. And you're like, well, that was a crazy little mark. Because sometimes those crazy little marks, that's, that's like what does it, you know? I'm going to just come down here and do my best to make the little bright inner hot corridor. This is really just about getting right on the edge of my little brush here. And you can see this is like, this brush has seen a lot of, uh, a lot of hard days. <laughs> I'll tap it down and like let it open up as it comes forward. Open up means it's like it's an implied little bit of light, but I'm not worried about making sure that that brush stroke like connects perfectly all the way down. Guys, I think that's. Wow. That's where we're going to be. Well, that's, I mean, like, I love it. <laughs> you got to sign it though. I do. And you're still under your 45 minutes. We got to get faster. Now, well, I do. <laughs> I want to pass along to everyone, you know, for as street, it, you know, cinnamon who has been painting for, for a while now on live, even she is having some emotional stress about doing the daily painting part. I am. I'm very nervous about it. I don't want to let anybody down. I don't let myself down. Make sure that everybody gets through it with the best possible experience about art so that they want to paint for their whole life. I have some feelings going on. So feel like you can talk about this with your with your loved ones, with your friends, with your groups here in the in the Art Sherpa official. Yeah, that's a monogram liner. If you want to know what I just signed with, it's a monogram liner. It's I like that. Hey. I'm gonna turn around. And we're gonna talk about it. Uh, okay. Forehead. There. Well, oh, you know you were turning on that. All fast. right. Okay. There it is. So here we go. This is what we did. It had a. It had a terrifying little moment there for a while, but overall, it's a nice loose painting. It's got some good value in it. Um. <sighs> oh, you did such a good job, baby. Congratulations. Thank you. You did it. I did it. <laughs> you did it. We did it. I did it. I did it. I painted the painting. Did it real fast. Did it real fast. Okay, so the point of doing it fast and loose is so that you don't get caught up in some section you're painting trying to resolve and resolve. It's about making fast decisions about this color is going to go here. I'm going to put this line here and being okay with the fact that when you get back from it, when you look at it, it's going to feel like a very expressionistic loose piece. So I think we hit that goal. If you've never done this before and it feels really hard right off the bat, trust me by 30, you're going to be like, I only paint loose now. Mm. That's all I do. I don't want to tighten up. So it is a journey. Don't judge your journey by the first painting. I'm going to try to take my own advice through this whole thing and just remember that by the time we wrap up we're going to be like man we just do this all the time yeah i want you to check out tomorrow's web page i will get the value study up and the grid step through and all the extra info that you can download so you can be ready bright and early at 11 a.m central standard time tomorrow mm -hmm. be good to yourself be good to each other and I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.